hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Miss Crochet and Coffee here. And today we are doing our weapon chat. So get out whatever it is you're working on and work along with me. I am still working on my adorable little fox from Run Far. Um, last I checked, it was still available. So if you were interested in this kit, I of course will link it down below. Do keep in mind that it will be my affiliate link. So any purchase made with that link, I will make a small commission. So I thank you in advance. But I hope you guys had a very happy, safe weekend. Um... It was a typical weekend here, you know, normal coffee house shenanigans, so let's get into it. This morning was interesting because I went to go take the dogs for a walk. Um, usually the dogs and I go walking right after Maggie gets into reading. I get her settled with her reading class, get Orion settled with whatever he's doing, and then I walk the dogs real quick while they're doing that. And I go to take the dogs for a walk today, and there was a guy there, and he's one of the guys that uh, does the sprinklers and stuff, like he works for the city. He works with the sprinkler company. And he was chucking the sprinklers in the grass over at the place where uh, the apartments cross the way there where uh, I take the dog to the dog park. And he had a stick in his hand. He was poking at something with the stick. And apparently Killian really wanted the stick. So Killian goes up and snatches the stick out of his hand and then tries to run away. And I'm like, Killian, what are you doing? Give the guy back his stick. And the guy just starts laughing. And he's like, oh my God, he's so cute. And then, of course, he goes and runs up on Killian. And Killian is, of course, loving on him. Killian has made quite a few friends. Uh, the other friend he's made is the maintenance lady. We have new maintenance people here. It seems like every couple of months, they get rid of the maintenance people here and hire a whole new staff. There's a whole new staff of maintenance people. The last staff they had was like, I think it was like five black guys. Now it's just like four women and a guy. And ain't nothing wrong with it, believe me. Ain't nothing wrong with it at all. Men or women can do the same work that men can do. But it just shocked me the first time I called for maintenance and a, a chick showed up because I've only ever seen the black guys. And so I was just like, oh, okay. And the one guy, I told them, you know, I didn't want him in my apartment anymore because if you were here last year, he walked into my house un unannounced, uninvited, and just kind of walked in like he was sneaking into my apartment because he didn't realize somebody was home. And they gave, it was around Christmas last year, because they gave me a $25 gift card to say sorry. And I'm like, I don't think that's going to keep me from having peace of mind. That's the reason why I have the security cameras in the kids' rooms now. Anyways, um, the maintenance lady, like, is in love with Daisy. And she's like, what kind of dog is this? And I'm thinking, can't you tell by looking at her? But I always forget, I'm so, I'm used to Daisy. So for me, it's not like anything shocking, like, oh my god. That's a pretty dog of a different breed. To me, Daisy is Daisy, okay? Daisy is a German Shepherd. Uh, if you're new here, Daisy is my German Shepherd, and Killian Jones is my Siberian Husky. Killian Jones is the one that's stealing sticks from people. But uh, Daisy is a rare color, I guess. She is sable and black. So your normal German Shepherd would be black and tan. Daisy is sable and black. So... They, uh, the maintenance lady, every time she sees Daisy, she goes over and pets Daisy. And, of course, Dur Daisy turns into a big derp and just rolls over and is just sitting there. Well, the other day we went to go do that. And the other maintenance guy that was out there came out. And he's like, oh, look at the dog. Daisy gets up, stands in front of the lady, kind of backs her up a little bit. And then starts, like, staring the guy down. Now, she's not growling. She's just looking at the guy. And she he, he goes, whoa, boy. I'm not going to hurt her. And I'm like, actually, she's a girl. And he's like, oh, she is? I'm like, yes. Hence, which I never got that. Why do people assume that German Shepherds are all boys? They're not. I have a female German Shepherd, which is why she has a pink collar and a pink leash. Like, does anybody ever, like, misconstrue your dog for, like, you have, like, a blue leash, blue sweater, blue booties, and they're like, oh, she's pretty. I did not put all this time and energy into coordinating the pink. For you to go, oh, he's cute. Uh, no. She is gorgeous. Thank you. But I appreciate it. Like, seriously. Sorry, I'm trying to get you guys from being all cattywampus. All right. So I haven't got a chance to work on this a whole lot because I've been working on stuff for the Etsy shop. Now, since Mr. Coffee's not here, I can talk to you guys about this a little bit. So, for those of you who don't know, I will be selling my canvases and my tote bags on Etsy coming up this week. So keep an eye out for it. Um... I will be selling the, the, the canvases and tote bags that I've been showing on Instagram. So if you if you don't follow me on Instagram, what are you doing with your life? Follow me on Instagram. It's just Miss Crochet and Coffee. Um, also, if you 
are interested in getting any kind of graphic design work done, if you noticed on my page, my banner changed. It'll be changing for my Etsy shop to match my YouTube channel as well. Um, the banner changed and my mother-in-law did that. And so she let me know that if anybody was interested in hiring her to do graphic for their channel or if you have a website or something, uh, she does have an Etsy shop that she just opened herself or reopened. Uh, so since she's been home with the pandemic, she, it gives her something to do. So, uh, I'll leave her information down below as well. But, uh, I do plan on selling my stuff. Now, my original goal was $1,500. My new goal is $2,000 because I have to pay for shipping and all that other stuff. And I want to make sure I get, uh, a warranty on it. So in case something happens to it within the first year or so, I can make sure I have the warranty. So I'm going to be reaching for $2,000. Now, with that said. I have this big thing where I like to earn things. I don't like stuff just handed to me. So where I appreciate the people that have already donated, I do really greatly appreciate you and all your, you know, donations. I'll probably be reaching out to those people to ask them if they would like to pick something out of the shop before I put it up for sale. And then sending that out to them. Um, I had a subscriber uh, let me know that her daughter would absolutely love the, the murderers that I did that says just straight killing it. So I'm sending that off to her, hopefully today, if I get motivation to get out of the house and put on pants. Look, I'm not trying to put on pants, y'all. It's cold as all get out outside. Uh, I, I I wake up this morning and I hear the, the echo tell me that it's 32 degrees. And I had like a Bruno Mars moment. Today I don't feel like doing anything. And then I remember, uh, you have to get up. It's, it's Monday, the beginning of the week. Y'all, I have the worst case of the Mondays I've ever had, ever. Like, I don't want to do anything. I just want to sit in my underwear and diamond paint. I haven't diamond painted since Friday, y'all. Friday. Like, I am dying over here. All I want to do is diamond paint. And I, like, like you're not diamond paint because you have to adult. And then you go back to it and it's like, we used to be in love. Like, I feel like I haven't diamond painted in years. And I'm just getting back into it. Like, I miss diamond painting so much, you guys. Um, but I need to get this stuff done for the shop because Mr. Coffee's birthday is November 5th. Now, for those folks that were donating for Mr. Coffee's truck fund, no need to fret. So sorry, apparently I forgot to turn off my notifications. Um, hold on, let me see if I can do that real quick. Oh, sweet. This phone is so much better than my old phone, but old phone would have cut it off, but I was able to cut off the notifications. But, uh... Yeah, so, for those folks that were donating to Mr. Coffee's truck fund, um... This is what's going to end up happening. The donations that I got, I got enough donations to get Mr. Coffee his fender flares. If you don't know what those is, the black things that cover the wheel well of your truck. I got enough money to buy those. So he will be getting those for our anniversary. Now, for those folks who don't know or you're new here, our anniversary is October 26th. It'll be 11 years that we've been married. And so for this anniversary, wheel well or... Will tire flares or whatever, whatever the hell they're called. That's that will be his gift. He will be getting the flares for his, his truck tires. That's a cool thing to give gift to get a guy, right? Right. If not, that's what he's getting. Um. So yeah, so he will be getting that for our anniversary, and then for his birthday, I want to get him the tablet because that gives me a little bit more time to raise the money because that's essentially me opening a shop by myself, trying to sell stuff by myself, uh, make stuff and everything else like. And I don't have a problem doing it by myself. I do appreciate the folks that have reached out to help. I do appreciate your help. Please don't take my, you know, turning you down as, you know, she's just being ungrateful. I'm not. I just really, this is something I really want to do on my own. Because I wasn't always supportive of the things that Mr. Coffee wanted to do. Because Mr. Coffee's one of these guys that his, his thought process changes as much as he changes his draws. So, um, trying to make sure that school is something he wanted to do was big on my mind because I'm like he he had tried to go to school once back when we lived in Pennsylvania and it didn't work out and he just gave up and Mr. Coffee has a bad habit of giving up on stuff when it gets too hard or he doesn't feel like dealing with it anymore or if it gets too frustrating so I told him this time that I would not let him quit well he's been bugging about taking my tablet to use but when he says to use he wants to use my tablet, but he doesn't want to give me my tablet back when he's done using it for school. 
he wants his own tablet, but he wants my tablet. And I'm like, you're not getting my tablet, buddy. I don't care what you say, what you got going on with your life. You was not getting my tablet, which is why I want to raise the money to get him the tablet. Because it sh I, I want to show him that I'm being supportive of him wanting to go back to school and stuff. Because, like I said, I wasn't always supportive. And when he told me that he was going back to school this time, I was just kind of like, yeah, mm, I don't know if that's going to work out. And so he still is doubting the fact that if I'm supportive of not of him going back to school. So I figured since he's been talking about wanting to get another tablet because the school sent him one, but it's super old. Like, I'm not sure what the hell he's supposed to be doing with it, but it's super old. So he wanted to get something a little bit newer. So, uh, hello. Are those supposed to be right there? Yeah, they are. Sorry, I have drills that are just kind of laying upside down up here. But, uh. Yeah, so I want to show him that I am supportive of him going back to school, which is why it means so much to me to earn this money and not just ask for handouts. Plus, I'm not, I'm not on, I'm not a charity case. I'm not on YouTube for charity. Like, for just two dollars a day, you can help this oil field worker get a tablet for school. Like, that's not what this is about. Like, there's, there will be no Sarah McLaughlin singing "Arms of an Angel" while I ask you for twenty five cents a day to help this oil field worker to get a tablet. Okay. Um, so that's why it means so much to me to try to earn this myself. Um, and depending on how well this does, I may or may not keep the shop open and randomly, like, kind of like Distracted by Diamonds does, whenever I get a stockpile of stuff, uh, just put it up for sale. Um, which you guys, I was able to get the last in the series, or the, the third girl that she did from Geneva. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I can't wait for you guys to see it. It was hell of expensive. 80 some odd dollars but I got it so that unboxing will be soon I promise um I have a lot of fun stuff coming to the channel uh I had to get rid of my darn good yarn subscription box which sucks because it was like the only crochet thing left on the channel and then I found another subscription that I wanted to try uh no it's not the what's the name of that box Rachel shows it it's knit crate it's not knit crate um, mostly because I do more crocheting than knitting. I can knit the basics, but I'm not a knitter. Like, I'm not a dirty knitter. I'm a, I'm a dirty hooker. I'm not a dirty knitter. Which one are you? Write that down in the comment section. If you can cro crochet or knit. Just wondering. Um, I do want to incorporate more stuff onto the channel, like crochet alongs and stuff like that. Where maybe we do, like, a granny square blanket and every couple of days we do so many blocks or something i gotta figure out something but i do want to incorporate some crocheting into the channel for those folks that because i've seen in the group because don't think just because i don't post in there a lot that i don't lurk around i did put some more admins in the group so that we have the group running a little smoother um i don't know what happened one of my admins is sick and then of course pawpaw is an admin and he's moving and getting settled in his new place and he has some family stuff going on right now that he's having to deal with but like a few of my oh sorry my hair is just like knocking the camera a few of the other moths kind of went ghost on me so i had to figure out what was going on and then we went ahead since the group is growing we added more people if you have not joined the group and you have facebook please feel free to join us over on facebook we are crafters anonymous with miss crochet and coffee and rachel ray Yes, me and Rachel Ray do share a group here on Facebook. Um, or over there on Facebook because this is YouTube. Anyways, um, so yeah, so I am super excited because the kids are almost done with school for the day. I'm recording while they're finishing up their last classes of the day. Um, I literally woke up and I, I didn't want to do anything. But I was excited because two weeks ago when it was cold and I if you're on Instagram and you, you follow me on Instagram... I put up the little video of how cold it was. On that day that the the weather got down to 30s for the first time, I ordered some more thermals. Now, if you didn't know, Miss Coffee got thunder thighs, okay? Um, and when you have thunder thighs, there's something that happens to your pants that the lightning strikes in the crotch area of your pants. And then you get that, that air conditioning hole on the side of both of your pants and it makes your thighs look like a can of busted Pillsbury dough biscuits. So I had that going on in the thermals I had before, and I was just like, it might be time for new thermals, because uh, there ain't nothing worse than the rest of your body warm, but the cakes that are hanging out of the holes that were made from the thunder thighs are freezing because your legs got like the little air conditioner spot. So I had to order some more thermals. So I ordered some more therm thermals. They came in, and of course, as soon as they came in, it warmed up outside. So I was like, god dang it. 
So they've been just sitting in my room chilling, waiting for it to get cold out. Well, this morning I wake up and I hear the Alexa tell me that it's like 20 some odd degrees. And I'm like, oh, good God. Or no, it was like 30 degrees. Sorry, it was 30 degrees. And I was just like, yeah, no, uh, where are those thermals at? All right. So because it was cold this morning, I was able to wear my thermals for the first time. And I hadn't put them on yet. And I'm always scared. Okay, I always have this this stupid thing. I get really anxious whenever I buy, especially clothes online, because I know they're not going to fit. Now, if you're a tall drink of water like Miss Coffee, you can relate. If not, uh, be lucky that you're not a tall drink of water. Being a tall drink of water is not easy. It might be nice to be able to reach that top shelf, but buying clothes? Yet, yeah, no thank you. Um, so I don't know what they're called in the, the UK, and I know people will um, let me know. So if you're in the UK and I say something funny, let me know. Because I know Kim bought me a pair of tights, or jeggings, and they fit perfectly. And I'm just like, yay! They look like I have on real pants, but I don't! So there's nothing better than a good pair of jeggings. So thank you, Kim, for that. Um, but uh, I'm sitting there. And I have the bag, and I'm sitting there, and I have to do my normal five-minute talk to the bag. Because, you know, look, bag, I know you contain clothes, and I'm a human, and I have to wear these clothes. So I'm going to need you to fit so I don't get mad this early in the morning because you don't fit on my butt, okay? I've lost a little bit of weight because I gained a little bit of weight, so I lost a little bit of weight. And I've been doing really well. I've been eating my little fig newtons and chewing on ice instead of buying or getting like unhealthy patty pies and all this other stuff. Like, don't worry, I'll be getting it soon. But right now I need to fit into these thermals. So I'm going to need you to fit me so that I don't throw a fit out here this morning outside. Because uh, whenever you buy clothes online and you're tall, you, one of two things happen. You either get like I either get pants where the crotch is down to my knees but the legs fit, or they turn into capris, which if you don't know what capris are, they're pants that go up to your the middle of your calf. That's what we call capris here in the U.S. So I'm sitting there going, you know, okay, look here, pants. I'm going to need you to fit, okay? It's cold outside. I ain't got time to be playing with you this morning. I'm going to need you to fit. Now, I should have tried them on when I first got them, but I didn't. Let's, let's not worry about why I didn't. Let's just focus on the fact that I'm trying them on now. Better late than never, right? Right. So I'm sitting there. And I go to try them on, and the pants were, they, I get to the bottom part of the pants, and it gets a little tight. Now, thermals, or as some people call them, long johns, they're meant to be form-fitting. Not like cut your circulation off and see your heart beat through your kneecaps, but they're supposed to be form-fitting. So when it got a little tight, I got worried at first, and then I was like, okay, these aren't regular pants. Calm down. So I get the first leg in, I get the second leg in, I jump up. Now, if you're anything like me, again, you have to jump into your pants. You can't just, you know, it's not one of those commercials for, like, the Depends where they're just, like, easily gliding their pants up and they magically fit them perfectly in form to their body to make them just look amazing. No, no, no. When you're a regular human and not a commercial human, um, you have to jump into your pants, okay? I understand Beyonce when she said she had to jump into her pants, okay? Um, so I'm sitting there and I jump into them. And I'm wiggling my butt around. You got to do that little wiggle around thing to make sure that everything's sitting in the right spot and butt cheeks aren't spread apart and all this other fun stuff. Because um, I'm not trying to have my butt hungry eating long johns while I'm outside and then have to do that weird walk to try to get the wedgie out. And people think you got poop up your butt or something. Either way. So I'm sitting there. And I'm like, alright. Alright. We're going we're gonna to get through this. We're going to get through this. Let's just... How do they fit? And I'm thinking, are they too tight? Are they too small? Do they fit, you know, my legs? Blah, blah, blah. There's a whole process I have to go through to make sure that these things fit me perfectly. And you guys, they did. I swear I could hear the angels. Hallelujah. Like, I was just like, yes, yes. Now, me not thinking that it's like 8 in the morning when I'm doing this, um, I have tiny humans in my house. And I hear a door open and I kind of, like, peek my head out the side of the door like, who the hell is up this early in the morning? And it was Maggie, and I was like, oh, crap, she's up early. Hold up, why is she up early? She's never up this early. Now, all weekend, Maggie slept in till about 11 o'clock. So the fact that she was up at 8, I either woke her up, or she was already up because she didn't sleep well. And in my house, where most of the time in most people's houses, it's if the wife is happy, everybody's happy. In our house, it's if Maggie's happy, everybody's happy. So I'm just sitting there going, okay. I'm trying to, like, look at her to see how her demeanor is. Does she have a mean face on? Does she have a happy face on? Like, what is the day going to hold? Because you never know with Maggie. She can flip a switch in 2.35 seconds. Like, I wonder if she also has the bipolars. Um, but I'm sitting there, and 
she comes out and she grabs her tablet and she's like, I'm going to listen to a story while you go walk the doggies. Because with Killian and his new meds, he has to pee a lot. Like, uncomfortably long amount of time that he's peeing. Like, it, it's ridiculous. So, I have to take him out first thing in the morning when I wake up. Which, today was his last pill. So, we'll see how he does after he's done with his pills. Because if he starts scratching his face again, he has to go back to the vet again. Which, by the way, have you ever gotten a bill where you thought somebody was giving you their phone number? And, in fact, it wasn't their phone number, but it was your bill. And you're just like, are you sure this ain't your phone number? Because I would rather give you a call than pay this bill right now. Um, That's what it's been like with Killian's vet bills lately. Like usually I use my YouTube money only for buying stuff for my channel and like paying uh, bills like cell phone bill, electric bill, cable bill. I'll pay half those bills because I use those things for the channel. This time I actually had to use some of my money for Killian's vet appointments. And I'm just like, you know, pulling out money out of my Razoo trying to, you know, pay for this dog's vet visit. And every time that doctor hands me a, a freaking bill, I'm just like, hyperventilating because I'm like are you sure you don't want to give me your phone number I will take your phone number at this point because I don't want to pay this bill like what the hell so but Kelly is doing uh fine he hasn't had any problems he got sick once and he hasn't gotten sick since and I think the, the uh reasoning for him getting sick was the fact that his tummy couldn't handle his zinc pills the way I was giving it to him because I was giving him a zinc pill uh I was giving him two zinc pills at once and I think it was too much for his stomach. So he got sick the one day. And so what I started doing is uh, giving him a zinc pill in the afternoon and in the evening. And uh, per uh, pretnazone, which is for his the inflammation of the stuff on his face and to keep him from scratching. He gets one of those in the morning. Now, I was a little worried about doing it like that, like breaking his pills up, but it seems to be working. He hasn't gotten sick since. He's been his happy-go-lucky self. He even found a ball to play with at the dog park and was playing with the ball. So, he's doing a lot better, which is nice because I swear I, I'm going to... I'm. I, I don't know what I'm going to do if he has to go back to the vet again to figure out what the hell is going on and why it, it won't stop. And for as far as we know, it's a zinc deficiency, so it's not anything like... I mean, yeah, it's dire, so if he doesn't have the correct amount of zinc, he could die. But knowing what it is and being able to treat it is wonderful, and I'm really hoping that, because uh, he'll be on zinc for the rest of his life now. And I found some doggy treats that have zinc in them, and as long as he gets two or three of those a day, he's golden. And what dog is going to be like, no, I don't want doggy treats. So yeah, it's a win-win for him, because he gets doggy treats and he gets the pill pockets still. He loves the pill pockets, the bacon pill pockets. Yeah, I don't even think he he chews them. He just swallows them whole. And I'm, at this point, I'm just like, you know what? You took the pill. You're not throwing up. I'm cool with it. You're cool with it. I'm cool with it. Good. So, there was that. Um, I got locked in the bathroom again by the dog. Uh, apparently, Killian likes to open doors. And it's funny because we ordered pizza on Thursday. The pizza guy comes and comes to the door. And Killian actually went to the door and opened it. Now, our big front door is a heavy door. But Killian can jump up on the handle and pull it backwards. Like, he's strong enough to open it. So, he opens it. And he kind of looks at the delivery guy. And the guy goes, holy sh it's a dog. And I was like, Killian. Because we were trying to, like, get up and get get to the door before the dog got to the door. And every once in a while, he will just go over there and open the Like, if he has to go to the bathroom really bad and you're not paying attention to him and he's trying to tell you he has to go, he will straight go up and open the door. Does anybody else have a pet that can open doors? Ask him for myself. Um, it's a struggle because I have to keep him. Anytime he hears noise in the hallway, he's like that nosy neighbor. He wants to have his nose stuck all up in the hallway trying to figure out what the noise is. All weekend this weekend, one of my one of my neighbors was, I guess, moving from the third floor to the second or to the bottom floor where we're at. Now, when you live in an apartment like this, I don't know if it's everywhere around here or just in my area or how this works. But uh, if you work, uh, hold on, I'm gonna put my, hold up. All right, sorry about that. I want to put my hair up so it stop hitting the camera. Um. But in my apartment building, if I live on the first floor, I pay more than the folks that live on the second or third floor. They take $100 off your rent for the, high, the higher the floor is. Um, just because of the inconvenience of having, like, every time you get groceries, you got to go all the way upstairs and everything else. And I'm like, all the way upstairs? I'm like, no, I would, I would make a pulley system and, like, 
we have like a big gallon thing and make a pulley system to pull the groceries up and down the stairs. I wouldn't be going up and down the stairs every time we got groceries. That's 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 insane. So every time these people would go up and down the stairs, they had a wagon and they would just let it bang down the stairs. Now I live on the first floor, right on the adjacent side of where the stairs are. So every twenty minutes it was doom 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 doom, and. Killian, after about two hours of this, okay, because it went on literally for two days straight. After two hours of this, Killian gets up. He goes and opens the door. And he, like, mean mugs this little boy that was walking around with the wagon in the hallway. He, like, mean mugging this poor little kid. And the poor little kid's looking. He's like, Mommy, there's a doggy opening the door. Now, I'm pretty sure his mom probably thinks he's insane now. Because by the time his mom came to check to see about the dog opening a door, Killian was gone. So she was, I, I hear her saying, stop making up, stop fibbing and get back to helping us get the stuff out of the house. So he goes, and I guess the little boy goes off and goes to go back to help. And then Killian's sitting at the door to like listening. And every couple of minutes, whenever he would hear that wagon, he would open the door again and start mean mugging them like, hey, look, you're disrupting my sleep. I don't appreciate it. We're going to stop this right now. So there's that. Killian just loves opening doors, but they... Uh, Killian opened the door to the bathroom when I was in a shower and then decided to lay in front of the shower. Now, he doesn't normally lay in the bathroom, which is what was odd about this, but he was laying in the bathroom and I went to go, of course, open the shower door and he was holding on to it, to which I had to, of course, call Maggie to come get the dog. Orion doesn't mess with the dogs like that. He's he's not a dog person. Orion's a cat person. The problem is he's allergic to cats. So, like, yeah, he gets that from his grandma. Anyways, um, so yeah, so... I, I had to get Maggie to come get the dog from in front of the door. And, of course, she's getting her 20 chuckles in. And she had to go call Orion to get his 20 chuckles in. And, luckily, I had my towel wrapped around me inside the shower. Um, but it, the shower door has some of that glass on it that you can't see through. Like, you can see silhouettes, but you can't see, like, the actual person. So, I really wasn't worried about them seeing anything. Because my kids don't, I don't let them see me, like, in my birthday suit. That's that's for me and Jesus. Um so yeah, like, it, it's, it's been a weird morning. The weekend was pretty chill for the most part. We sat around, like, Maggie's big thing was, she kept asking me, she's like, Mommy, can we sit around and do nothing all weekend? I'm like, we sure can, buddy. And she's like, really? I'm like, yeah. Meanwhile, she's doing nothing. She's laying in her room like a bump on a log. I'm sitting here busting my butt trying to get stuff made for the shop. Um... And right now, if you go to the shop, it says that I'm on vacation mode. It will stay on vac vacation mode until I open it. Um, I will hopefully, like I said, have it open by Friday. And then uh, after that, I'll, we'll see how it goes with me selling stuff. If it goes well, I will continue selling. If it doesn't go as well as I'm thinking it, it won't, uh, which I don't know why I think it won't go well. But if it goes to the point where I can keep up with doing that and doing uh, the channel, then I will probably continue to sell stuff. Um, it just depends on how nasty people get. And I'm just going to warn you now, if you live out of country, uh, your shipping cost is going to be outrageous. I've debated and been debating whether or not I should open this up internationally or just within the U.S. Because internationally, just to give you a heads up of how ridiculous this is, uh, I shipped a package out to Pippa. Um, Pippa lives in, for those folks who don't know who Pippa is, Pippa is Pippa Brown here on YouTube. She lives in Australia, in Tasmania, Australia. Yeah, apparently it's a real place. I know. I didn't know either, and when she told me, I laughed for like 30 minutes, and I was like, hold up, it's a real place. It's, and she's like, yeah, it's a real animal too. I'm like, well, I got the animal part, but, uh, you actually living in a place called Tasmania is hilarious. Um, the other person that lives in a funny place is, uh, Mama Vapes and Diamond Paints. She lives in Rancho Cucamonga, which if you've ever seen the f movie Fridays... Or, or Friday with Ice Cube and Chris Tucker, and Chris Tucker takes and goes, or no, no, Ice Cube goes to stay with family in Rancho Cucamonga, California. I didn't realize that was a real place, and then when she gave me her address for the first time, now I'm just like randomly sending her things because I just like writing Rancho Cucamonga on the po postage. So yeah, um, but yeah, postage is outrageous. Um, if I get a lot of complaints about it, more than likely I will shut down shipping outside of, like, Canada. Because Canada's wasn't as bad. I think I sent one item over there for, like, 12 bucks, But it was literally $30 to send to Australia for a canvas. Like, an artist canvas and, like, a shirt. 
that's it. And I'm just like, what the hell? This is highway robbery. So I'm just going to warn you now that if you're out of country and you live somewhere outside of the U.S. or Canada, your shipping is probably going to be close to 25 to 30 bucks because that's the cost it's going to cost me to ship it. And I don't know if it's worth it to, to even open it up to internationals for that price because you would literally have to buy half the stockpile to make it even worth buying. So we'll leave that up to chance and see how that works out. But, uh, yeah, it's I, I'm trying to get all my ducks in a row now so that uh, when the shop opens, it's a smooth transition, um, which is why I haven't just opened the shop already because I want to have enough stock in stock to be able to do so. So I'm hoping to do that. Um, I, had a, I had a subscriber comment on one of the pictures I did and said her daughter would love it. And so I have to go out to the post office today to give that to her and her daughter. Um, so I hope they enjoy it. I, I also decided instead of going with the canvases, I'm going with panels, which are just flat. They're like flat canvases without that big backing on them. So I'm going to do panels to see if that will cut down the cost of shipping as well. Um, but after like five of them, like it, it gets pretty heavy. So like, yeah. Anywho, um, so yeah, so the shop will be open hopefully at the by the end of the week this week. I'm excited to open it for you guys to get some stuff. So there's all that news. Anyways, um, so it, like I said, it's been a chill weekend. And you ever have the point where your kids get along, but they, they're getting along too well, and you start to question what's going on, like, Okay, are they about to commit a mutiny or what's going on? Why are y'all all of a sudden so, you're like, all of a sudden you're like, let me just tell you about my best friend. I'm like, what? what is going on right now? Because I know something's up because you guys never play nicely together without being told to play nicely together. So what is going on? And Orion and Maggie are just sitting there like, we're not doing anything. Okay. And then Maggie's like, mom, can we have pancakes? Now on Saturdays, it's been pancake day. So Maggie, I usually try to feed Maggie what she wants. Um, just because she's so small. Maggie's, Maggie's been the smallest one of my kids, uh, that I've had. Uh, Minna was eight, or, no, Minna was nine pounds, one ounce. Orion was eight and a half pounds, and, and he was a month early. He was supposed to be 12 pounds, but he came in a month and a half early, or no, a month early, and he was eight and a half pounds. And then there was Maggie, who was seven pounds, so nine, eight, seven. So Maggie's always been the smallest, and even now she's the smallest. She looks like... If you put, if you, if you put it, she, she's so small that I'm pretty sure if she rubs her legs together fast enough, she could spark a fire. Like, I'm keeping her out of California's reach because at this point, she just wants to start fires. And I had to tell her earlier this weekend to stop smacking her kneecaps together because it just, it, you could hear the bones snapping together. And I'm like, could you please, for the love of all that is holy, like, you're so tiny. Everybody in the house is built solid. Orion is built solid. Minna's even built solid. Maggie's just this gangly piece of Laffy Taffy that they stretch too long. And so whenever she says she wants something, usually I try to migrate towards that. Not always, though, because then if that was the case, then I would eat nothing besides mac and cheese and hot dogs. And, uh, let's see, what else does she like? She likes meatloaf. She likes vegetables, like any and all vegetables. But it's just sometimes the meat is what gets to her. And when she wants, like, ground beef, she'll say she wants meat. So I usually try to feed her what she wants so that, you know, we can try to pack some pounds onto her because she's a little teeny tiny. And, uh, the doctor says, you know, she's, she's okay for her size. Like, you know, she's not malnourished or anything like that. She's just... Has a high metabolism, which both me and Mr. Coffee both have high metabolisms. Mr. Coffee only recently gained weight within the last five or six years, but he's literally been the same weight for over half our marriage. He's been the same weight because he has such a high metabolism. But now he's gained like 40 pounds and he hates it, so we're not going to talk about it too much because he doesn't like it. But I tell him he still looks cute and he's just like, I don't like it, I got a tummy. And I'm like, I know. That's all the food I've been feeding you. I'm sorry. He's like, but I like potatoes. I'm like, yeah, potatoes don't like you, though. Oh, my God. Over the weekend, I just kept making him potatoes. Like, every time I turn around, it was potato, 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 potato. And I'm just like, can we have something else that's not freaking mashed potatoes? Well, then Sunday, I decided, you know what? He's been working really hard. He had a job interview, actually, today, because today is Monday. So he had a job interview today. 
uh, because he, he wants to get out of the oil field. The, the work is literally like tearing his body down, so he wants to get out of the oil field, get something a little bit more consistent. So he went for a job interview today, and they're supposed to call him back either today or tomorrow. So fingers crossed for that. I will keep you guys updated on how that is. If nothing else, you'll hear about it in live. So, um, but yeah, he's he's having to he. he I figured this would be a great time for him to look for a new job. The only problem is we have to wait and see how long it's going to take for the insurance to kick in because that's my major concern because with everybody in their meds, without that insurance, we're screwed. So we have to see how long it's going to take for the insurance to kick in and all that. Um, so at that and to see if they actually have really good health insurance because from what I've heard, uh, this place usually takes pretty good care of their employees. So... And I'll tell you all the details about it, you know, later on. But for right now, I don't want to jinx them or anything. So I'm just going to leave it to the ether and see how it goes. But, yeah, it was a pretty chill weekend. And the kids were getting along. And me and Mr. Coffee were just kind of here doing our thing, talking politics and stuff. And he's like, it's weird that you're all in the politics now. It's all I watch now. Like, all I watch is just stuff on politics. I like to analyze every little piece of everything so that I can make an informed decision. Now, I, for the most part, already know who I'm voting for. But I still like to, like, keep up with everything. And so he's just like, don't you get tired of watching the news? I'm like, nope. Not at all. I'm like, this is why this is the first year I have voted since I've become an adult. Don't come at me. But I just didn't feel the need to. I, I, I didn't see the point in it. And this year, I'm just like, okay, now I see the point in it. Now it's time to make my voice heard, you know, because that's what I do any other time anyway. So, um, so yeah, make sure that if you're not registered to vote, you go ahead and register to vote because, you know, voting is important. So, yeah, so that was essentially our week, or I should say the weekend, just trying to keep Killian from opening the door and scaring the new neighbors and uh, making sure that everything was done in the house and the kids were getting along nicely, so I got to do a lot of work over the weekend that I needed to do for the shop. Uh, also, I was sitting there planning out dinner, and Maggie decides that she doesn't want pork roast for dinner. She wants tacos. Now, I always, I'm always trying so hard to wait until Tuesday to make tacos. So I can be like, uh-oh, Taco Tuesday. But no, my, my family, for like the last two or three weeks straight, we've had tacos on Sundays. And I'm like, if this is how it's going to be, then I'm going to make the same seven meals for the next however long until she gets sick of them. Because there's only certain meals in my house that everybody will eat. One of them is chili, tamale pie, tacos. And then, of course, we have the kids' meals, which are like, Mac and cheese and hot dogs and SpaghettiOs and stuff like that. And I'm like, look, this is why I'm probably gaining all this weight as it is now. Because I'm sitting up here eating all this kid food instead of eating real food. I'm like, can we have some, like, real food for once? And they wanted tacos. And, of course, they they knew if they asked Daddy if he wanted tacos that he would have tacos. So I got kind of voted out there. I got voted off the island of tacos for tacos. And I'm just like... I can't even be mad at y'all because if that, if I, I don't, it's not that I don't like tacos, but I was really looking forward to that pork roast. So that's okay. We're having it today for dinner and I don't have any more stuff to make anything else. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're having for dinner and they're going to have to eat it whether they like it or not. Now I'm not one of these parents that makes a special meal for my kids. Like you, I have the old school rules. Who else had these rules when you were growing up and your parents made something you didn't like, you didn't eat because if you didn't like it and you didn't like what they cooked, you weren't eating. That's essentially what I'm doing with my kids because I'm not about to sit here and make three and four different meals just to please everybody. Like, that's not a thing. And a lot of the stuff I make, they do like. But, again, it's children, so they change their mind, like, every 30 seconds. And so one day, Maggie will eat ground beef and she'll eat meatloaf. And then the next day, she'll be like, ew, I don't like meat. Meat is gross. And Maggie's also that child that likes to play the... My food's too hot, my food's too cold, my food's too hot, my food's too cold. And she'll do that with you all day. It's enough to want to pull your hair out, right? Right. That's the reason why I have my head shaved on the sides. <laughs> oh, we got a doggy snoot. Hi, Daisy. Can I finish recording? All right. I think she's cool now. She just saw me stand up and she was just like, what is mommy doing? So yeah, so it was a pretty chill weekend. We got our tacos, but today we're having pork roast, and I'm excited for it. Um, real people meals. 
we have a bunch of kid meals throughout the week for the most part for the kids, but there's those times where I'm like, no, I need an adult meal with real, with real sayings. Like, and I think that's what makes me feel so weird whenever I talk to like Rachel. Rachel's so like she's like over, she's like cultured, so she's had like, what's that favorite thing she loves? Uh, duck pancakes. Like half the time she's like, have you ever tried like cordon bleu? And this I'm like, look, chick. I didn't eat dirt today, so that's a plus for me, okay? I don't I don't eat all this culture food. I, I'm a real person with little tiny humans. The fanciest thing that the kids eat, well, I should say Maggie eats, is sushi. I don't eat sushi, obviously, because I'm allergic. And Ryan doesn't like sushi, so me and him will have uh, sweet and sour chicken and then, like, Mr. Coffee, like, this week, uh, or last week, uh, Mr. Coffee... And Maggie had a little sushi date because she did so well in school that he told her that if she did well, he would have a little sushi date with her. So he bought her and her, him some sushi, and they had a little sushi date here at the house. And then me and Mr. me and uh, Orion sat and ate our little sweet and sour chicken since Orion doesn't seem to have an interest in seafood, and Maggie really likes sushi. And it was funny because then when the delivery guy came to the door, she goes, "Do you have my sushi?" And the delivery guy's like, oh, she's so cute. He goes, he goes, I think I have your sushi. Did you order some sushi? She goes, I got California rolls. That's what Mr. Coffee gets her, I guess. It's called California rolls. I don't know what's in it. I just know whatever it is, she loves it. And she'll eat it. And I'm thinking, as long as you eat it, I don't care. Like, eat away. Eat, eat all the sushi. But yeah, for the most part, the kids are doing good in school. Friday, uh, the teachers got with the parents, and we had to check to make sure that the kids had all their assignments turned in for the nine, first nine weeks. And I was happy because my children, both my children, were one of few people in the class that actually had all their work completed. So neither one of the kids had to do any extra work. Of course, Maggie did because I want. I'm, we're still in that stage of learning to read. So she had reading assignments that I gave her. Not necessarily that her teacher gave her, but I gave her. To help build on her reading. And thank you to everybody who's been giving me advice on things that I could do with her. Uh, she does really seem to like audiobooks. But the problem is she wants to play a game whenever she's listening to audiobooks. So um, I'll let her listen to them. And she has to do something to keep her hands busy. So like I'll pull out a word search or something and have her do that while she's listening to the audiobook. And then I make her tell me whatever it was that was said. Like I make her summarize what she was reading. While doing the crossword puzzle or coloring or what have you. And for the most part, she can. And then there's times where she can't remember. So, like, she'll be like, can I read it again? And I'm like, uh, yeah. And look, his little foot. We got a little foot. Y'all, this fox is so confetti. Oh, my gosh. And I haven't worked on him since Friday. And I miss it so much. I'm, I feel like I haven't diamond painted in years. Reunited and it feels so good. Like, I, I feel like that's what my brain is singing right now. Um, I legit miss just being able to sit down and diamond paint and get a kit done and start up a new kit. I want to start Neon so bad, but I refuse to start her until, uh, I get the shop stuff settled and everything else because I want to be able to sit and enjoy that one. And unlike with this one, which I am enjoying working on this one, I'm not having any trouble with popping drills or anything like that. Um, but it's funny how scarred you can be from one canvas with popping drills to the point where you then have to spend the rest of your time going over your drills just to make sure that they're not popping and uh because you've had one kit one kit with popping drills and all of a sudden your brain is like well now you gotta check and make sure all your square kits don't have popping drills so yeah but i'm not having any popping drill issues the glue is a little not it's how do i say this the glue isn't as tacky as you would think it would be for being poured glue and if it just happens to not be tacky or it seems a little gummy what i would suggest is leaving it open for about 20 30 minutes make sure of course no animals or little tiny humans are around leaving it open and then uh sorry i just lost my train of thought leave it open and let the glue cure and that should help with the gumminess of the canvas if it's not you know as if it's more gummy than it is tacky i should say also to anyone who got uh same of that kit my garden needs tending. Um, the new Manny Manzano that I showed. 
please, please, please take a look at your DMC codes in the kit. Because I was alerted after I did the video. I was alerted that the number 995 is not supposed to be in the kit. You're supposed to have 955, not 995. Uh, please contact, of course, Diamond Art Club. Do keep in mind that if you purchase your kit from someone else, it voids your warranty with Diamond Art Club. So they legally don't have to give you anything because you bought it from us. It's kind of like a second-hand dealer or something. I don't want to say dealer because I feel like I'm like we're dealing out like inappropriate craft supplies or something. All right, and then I think this is the last thing I'll talk to you guys about before I let you go. Let's talk medication real quick, okay? Because I feel like a lot of us are on medication, so you might be able to uh, relate to what I'm saying here. Have you ever got a medication that the side effects are worse than what you're actually taking the medication for? Um, asking for myself. Let me tell you what happened. So, as you guys know, I suffer from insomnia. Now, with my insomnia, I've dealt with it for so long. It's just a thing. I can stay up for three days straight. And I, I would say without a problem, but it is a problem because it makes me incredibly irritable and stuff. So, of course, whenever I had the stroke, they put me on, you know, meds for stuff. For, like, my, for my migraines and everything else. And the one medication they put me on was supposed to help me sleep. It's for insomnia. Now, it's... It starts with an A. I can't think of the name of it right now. And I don't have the bottle next to me like I normally do. Because it's sitting over there on the counter. And I don't feel like going to get it. But uh, it's supposed to help with my blood pressure. And it's supposed to help with my migraines and stuff. Uh, and helping me sleep. Because she, she thinks one of the main key problems is. My brain doesn't shut off when I go to sleep. And I'm like probably not. Because I can listen to a whole audio book in my sleep. And still know exactly what the book was about. Uh, matter of fact I did it this weekend. Stitch Reese is doing the true crime series on her channel. Which is really cool, so if you haven't checked it out and you like true crime, go check that out. I'm hoping she makes a playlist of them, because I'm going to need to go watch them from, or listen to them from the beginning, because I missed a couple of them. Because I didn't think I was going to like it, it's not my jive. So, I was listening to one of her books as I was, like, sleeping, and then I woke up and I was like, oh my god, I really like that story. Like, you know, that's pretty cool. So, my brain, it doesn't shut off when I go to sleep. But the medicine that I take makes it shut off. My only worry is I'm worried I won't hear the kids. One of the side effects is extreme dry mouth. And I'm thinking, extreme dry mouth? Like, and I'm thinking, oh, well, you know, every once in a while your mouth would just be really dry or something. No, no, no big deal, right? Right. All right, sorry, Matt Orion needed help with this work. And I want to go check on Maggie. And she's sleeping. Um... I knew she was going to be tired because when she woke up this when I woke up this morning and I had to have the conversation with my pants, she was up and I was like, is she going to she going to have a good day or a bad day? Is this going to be a good day or a bad day? Like you never know when it comes to Maggie and with her wake if she wakes up early on her own, it's going to be a bad day cuz she's more likely going to be tired all day and she's been asking to take a nap since she first started class. So, she is sleeping right now. Um which is kind of cute cuz she sleep on her turtle on her desk. She mathed herself right on out, which sucks because she will have to get up to finish her math work, but I'll let her sleep until I'm done. So if nothing else, she'll get like a little cat nap. But yeah, back to medications. So my, my uh, side effects of my medication, one of them is dry mouth. So like Saturday morning, I wake up and Mr. Coffee was going into work late that day. He had some stuff he had to do before work. He wakes up, and I wake up, and I'm like, good morning. He's like, good morning, gorgeous. Oh, my God. And I was like, well, well what was that? Why why you, why you got to say that? Now, the one thing you don't ever want is for your husband to wake you up and have, like, a really sweet greeting. He's like, oh, good morning, gorgeous. And then he stops mid-sentence to go, what the hell's wrong with your face? Which is essentially what happened. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, oh, my mouth is so dry. Like, like oh, my God. So, like, every morning now I have to, like, use a special mouthwash because my mouth gets so dry that before I go to bed and when I wake up in the morning I have to use this mouthwash because if not, literally I can't talk. There's just no moisture in my mouth. The other side effect is it makes me incredibly tired. Now, that's the idea of the medicine, right? Right. Except for it's, it works too good. Like, you ever get a medication that works too good? Um, so, one of the side effects is uh, narcolepsy. Now, I'm like, I get that I came in here with the problem of having, like, being able to sleep, but I don't want narcolepsy. Like, I don't want to just be, you know, one minute you're doing your thing, you know, living your best life, and the next minute you're, like, passed out on the floor somewhere. Like, I'm not looking for that type of help. I'm just looking for a little something to help me, you know, 
get me off to sleep. And, and one of the questions, of course, they have to ask you is, you know, do you drink? And I'm like, no, I don't drink alcohol. You know, it's just not my gig. And she's like, okay, well, we'll be able to put you on this type of medication. You just got to make sure you don't drink with it. I'm like, again, I don't drink. Not my cup of tea. I drink coffee. She goes, oh, you can drink coffee and stuff, no problem. But I'm just going to tell you now, this is going to make you incredibly tired. So take it after dinner because there has to be something in your stomach for it to, like, you know, not tear up your stomach. So I was like, all right, cool. Well, I'm sitting there. And ever since they changed the dosage on me, because when I ran out, and they changed the dosage. Um, ever since they changed the dosage, right after dinner, we're usually done at dinner. I, I cook at 5. By 5.30, 5 6 o'clock, we're eating. And then by 7 o'clock, we're done. Um, and this is our schedule for the most part every day. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay. Well, that first time I take the, the pill, it's 7 o'clock because my, my Alexa goes off and tells me to take it at 7 o'clock. So that time comes, she goes off to tell me to take it, and I'm like, all right, cool. Um, the next thing you know, it's like 7.15, and I'm, I'm asleep. I'm gone. I'm out. Like, Mr. Coffee tries to wake me up. He can't get me up. Now, that's my biggest fear is the fact that something will happen, and I won't wake up. Now, I'm sure I would, but my brain has to overanalyze everything. Like, does anybody else's brain overanalyze the stupidest things? Um my brain will overanalyze it first before it can rationalize what's actually happening. I do the same thing with bills every month. Like now, when I live in Pennsylvania, I had to do it because we literally, with my husband working three jobs, still qualified to, to get assistance because even working the three jobs, he still wasn't making enough money for us to get by on. And we weren't living in like the laps of luxury or anything, but we just weren't making enough to get by on. So these equal symbols are a little light so yeah so now that he we live here and you know we've been able to pay bills just fine with what he makes and everything else even even with him getting a new job uh we'll still be able to do fine on bills my brain has to overreact to the fact that you know his check doesn't cover all the bills all in one check and then once I freak out about it for a good 10, 15 minutes, and then my brain finally decides to calm down and rationalize what's going on and be like, oh, okay, this is how you solve that problem. So, like, I, I don't know. It's a character flaw, I guess. Um, so, yeah. So, my medication makes me incredibly tired. So, fifteen, literally 15 minutes after I take it, I pass out. So, every day from 7.15 to 8 o'clock, I, I go to sleep. I just fall asleep here on the couch. And the kids are usually like, you know, Mr. Coffee usually deals with the kids while I'm asleep. He just lets me sleep. He'll cover me with my heated blanket. And he'll just let me sleep. Um, meanwhile, I wake up like, you know, however long later and I'm like, why did you let me sleep? And I always feel out of it when I wake up. But then like 15 minutes later, I feel like I've been awake all day. And then I'm groggy for the rest of the evening until I decide to go to bed. The problem is, if I take the pill before I go to sleep, like if I take it like 30 minutes before I think I'm going to fall asleep or go to sleep, I won't get tired. But it only happens like that if I take it like right after I eat. And I don't want to eat that late in the evening because uh, one of the ways I lose weight is I don't eat past 7 o'clock because that's when your body's less active. So I tend not to eat after a certain time of night. Now, I fail miserably some nights, but for the most part, I try not to eat past 7 o'clock. And it's something that works for my dad, so I was like, I wonder if that'll work for me. And it does. It, it really does. I don't drink as much water as he does. But the just the not eating past 7 o'clock because your body's not moving enough to make and lose that, inner, or like, lose that fat and energy and stuff to exercise that, that food away, it really does help me. So... I do that, and so I tried it the one night, and it, it, it does work. Right after you finish eating, it will knock you out. And I'm like, is that why they said I need it? Like, I feel like a baby, like how they always tell you to fill the baby's stomach up before you put it to sleep so it'll sleep longer. I feel like that's what my medicine does to me. So I'm just kind of like, one minute I'm sitting here, and like Mr. Coffee looked at me yesterday, and he's just like, is it nap time? I'm like, nap time? <sighs> Wake up out like 45 minutes later. I'm like, what did I miss? What did I miss? And he's like, um, nothing. We've just been sitting here. But I'm going to go walk the dogs now. Okay. 
all right. And then I had to get my bearings because I'm like, okay, you know, I fell asleep. I shouldn't, what kind of, what kind of mom falls asleep on the job and all this? And he's just like, I'm, I'm right here. I'm pretty sure I can take care of the kids. And I'm like, yes, but I feel guilty. Let me have this. It's a whole big thing, y'all. It's a whole big thing. Either way. But yeah, for the most part, we had a pretty chill weekend. Um, we did have a weird run. I had a run in with a weird guy in my inbox on Instagram, which apparently a lot of you have had a, a, a encounter with this feller. This feller coming into your inbox and telling you how much he in love of in love with you he is, and I'm just like, has that ever worked for you? Like, have you ever went into somebody's inbox and was like, I love you, I'm so in love with you, and they're like, okay, let's run away together. Like, are you hoping that somebody's finally gonna be like, oh yes, I love you too. I've loved you from afar for so long. Like, what the hell do people think? Like. And I, I'm guessing it's a troll account, so I was just kind of like, look, buddy, I've had stalkers in my day, and it didn't go over well for them. So I'm, I can tell you right now, after, after the second stalker, th I took up kickboxing because I was fearful because uh, this guy followed me almost an hour and a half home. Now, I say hour and a half because I drove past my house and went somewhere else. I wasn't about to go to drive to my house because I didn't know... If he had ever followed me before. And so I got scared enough to the point where I took up kickboxing for four years. I was actually pretty good at it. I thought about getting into it again, but then the pandemic hit and I'm like, well, here goes that idea. So now I just kick around the kids' baby dolls all day. Um, So yeah, so like it was just weird and I'm like, does this ever work out for you where people are just like, oh, I love you too. Let's get married. Let's let's have a family. Like I'm like, get the hell out of here. And then the person kept making troll accounts to try to keep talking to me. And I'm like, dude, like seriously, like you, you get an A for effort because you are resentless. But I have already told you, I am married. I want nothing to do with you. Get your stinking ass out of my inbox. Like leave me the hell alone. So yeah. So other than that, it was actually a pretty good weekend. It was a pretty good weekend. So... That is where I'm going to end it for today, folks. Thank you guys so much for coming with me on this weird journey of whipping and chatting. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Got a couple of laughs. Got some work done. With that said, if you're new to the channel and would like to see more random crazy videos just like this, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified anytime I randomly decide to put up a video. And believe me, it's random. With that said, folks, always remember if you're going outside, wear your mask. Keep your distance, don't touch your face, wash your hands, and always try to remember to be kind, be courteous, be cool. Bye, guys!